Okay, so we are starting the last section of the class here. Hard to believe, all the way at the end, right? So I just like to show this this little graphic here for fun. Um, if you ever want to be a biochemist, all you got to do to be one of the best in the world is learn all of this by heart, memorize it. Uh, this is from 2003, so there are parts of it that are almost definitely wrong now that they had misunderstood, I'm sure. Do I know what parts they are? No, but there's probably like an arrow that should go slightly somewhere else or something, or there's a protein they didn't know about or whatever. But, um, so yeah, you zoom in, like just look at that. That's, that's all of metabolism right there. The whole thing. So it's even got photosynthesis in it, which we don't do yet until I get my way. Uh, we've got, uh, lipid biosynthesis, breaking lipids down for energy. Lipid degradation is what they call it on this one. <clears throat> Formation of phospholipids for, you know, cells and things like that, organelles. Uh, it's all in here. I mean, you know, if it's not an, a, a, if it's not an essential amino acid or, or something like that, then there's going to be a way to make it. And then no matter what it is in terms of amino acid or nucleic acid, uh, carbohydrate, there, there's a, a way to break it down as well for energy. And so out of this whole thing, what are we going to really focus on? Well... It's going to be this section here and not nearly to the level of detail that you see here so this is this is you know if you take a whole year of biochemistry this is what you get you go into graduate school you, you fill in the blanks a little bit more um, and so this is going to be how we make ATP in our body from you got to start actually all the way up here from glucose so it's going to go straight down the middle we're, we're studying just the backbone of this thing but keep in mind that this is this is the process we get energy out of and you can get lipids in there and do that you can get nucleic acids we can break those down for energy in an emergency it's best to use them for what they're built for you know dna and rna but if push comes to shove and we need atp to survive we can break that down for atp same with amino acids so here's a little bit simpler this one's a little fuzzy but you'll see why when you see where i got it from uh, and you will see where I got it from eventually. Uh, a little bit more scaled down. So this doesn't have the um, amino acids on it, but they would essentially feed in as well. And so this is like the backbone. This is what we're going to study. So we're going to go somewhat in depth on. Not much more in depth than you're you're seeing right here. But keep in mind that so you know we can break down other energy sources. So fatty acids. We take a triglyceride. We cleave off the fatty acid, and we can turn that into acetyl CoA, which we'll talk about more later. And that feeds in the citric acid cycle and allows us to get ATP. So it gets all turned, everything gets turned into CO2 at the end. And all the energy from going from a fatty acid or glucose or an amino acid, from going from that to CO2 and water as well, uh, gets stored in ATP and used for cellular processes. So it's very efficient because we just ratchet along a little bit at a time. So it's not one big fire. It's not a combustion reaction. It's heavily mediated. There's tons of proteins in here, right? There's all these protein names are in this thing, uh, I think, or they're just labeled. There's actually another key that has the protein names because usually every step of the way, there's one or two proteins involved in every one of these arrows. Okay, so this is going to be more what we're focused on. But keep in mind, when we come back to this guy, we can break fatty acids down for energy. We can break down amino acids for energy. And anytime that we break something down, there's a nitrogen in it, which generally you're definitely not going to see in something like glucose. I'm going to see that in fats, but that's where our nitrogen waste comes from. Amino acids, um, oh, sorry, amino acids are on here. Nucleic acids as well are, are going to be a source of nitrogen waste, which we turn into urea and then we excrete through urine. That's how we get rid of it. How do we get rid of CO2 waste? We exhale. How do we get rid of this? Well, we pee. And then there's other ways we get rid of in other ways too. So, come back to this. So, there's our overall reaction. You know, nice little combustion reaction, but it's not really a combustion reaction in terms of the nitty gritty and how it's done. It's not a, it's not on fire, uh, and so we're going to generate ATP, and we're going to talk about this more uh, in the next two videos, and then the last video we will talk about this, and I'm actually going to link uh, an external video that has some really cool simulation stuff that shows a lot of the enzymes in action, just just because it's fun to see. Uh, but we will talk about the electron transport chain in here as well. Also known as oxidative phosphorylation, same thing. All right, so uh, we're going to break this down on paper in the next two videos, for, and then I will actually use images again for this one at the end, so 
be another screen capture and a highly recommended animated electron transport chain video that you should see at the bottom of this page uh, if you're on the course web page I highly recommend it all right so let's talk about getting ATP out of stuff